One very important thing to understand about React State is that it is asynchronous. And not only is it asynchronous, when you update state, that update would be batched or you can say queued for the next render. In the previous lesson, we learned how to create and manage state in a component. And we have come to understand that when you update state, it causes a re-render of that component. And I mentioned that the update process is asynchronous and that's what we're gonna be looking at in this lesson. So the first thing I'm gonna do as usual, npm run dev to run my development server and if you remember from the previous lesson we had two buttons one of the buttons updates the show heading state and the other button updates the show pricing card state the only thing i have done is to add some colors and do some styling so if you click on update show heading this is the button here this is going to call this function update show heading and update show heading is going to update the show heading state the show heading state conditionally renders the heading so if i click it show heading becomes false the heading is is no longer showing if i click on it again show heading becomes true the heading is now showing same thing for show pricing cards false the pricing cards are not showing true the pricing cards are now showing so what do i mean by react state is asynchronous let me show you now when you click on this button this click event is handled by this update show heading function and this function when executed is going to call set show heading which is going to update the state of show heading and that is going to cause a re-render right so if i click on this this causes a re-render where show heading is now false and the heading doesn't show. And if I click on these two, this also causes a re-render where show pricing card is now false and it doesn't show. Now this is where the asynchronous part comes in. Let's say you call set show heading here. For the first time, show heading is true, right? Which means by calling it now, it is going to update the state to false. Now let's say we try to assess show headings. Now if I should open my console here, watch what happens when I click on update show heading. When I click on this, you can see that the heading is not showing which means the show heading state is now false right but you can see in the console what we have here is true true is coming from console log show heading and now you might be wondering why is it true when we called set show heading and we negated the current state of show heading which is true that means we updated the show heading state to false but here when we log it what we are actually getting is true this is where synchronicity applies the idea here is that when you you click on this button which is handled by this function update show heading here we update the state to false but react is not going to update the state instantly instead react is going to batch this update or you can say queue this update so react is going to queue this update for the next render but before the next render occurs react is going to run this line so because this has been batched or queued it means that this state is still true because we are still in the first render let me explain this again we are currently in the first render and in the first render show heading has a state of true now we click a button which calls this function and here we want to update show heading to false but because this is not synchronous if it was synchronous this would be immediately updated to false and would trigger a re-render but because this is asynchronous it's going to batch this update which means in the next render show heading is going to be false but that next render doesn't happen until everything in this function has been executed because we still have some code left here which is console log show heading this is still going to have access to the first render then when everything here is executed react can now trigger the next render and in the next render show heading will now be false so if i should come out here and do console log show heading let me just put a label here to say outside and let me put a label here to say inside if i should open the console again you can see this console log outside show heading runs and here we have outside true because show heading is currently true now when we click on this button update show heading you can see we have inside true and then we have outside false this inside true means this function is executed this update is going to be batched for the next render but that next render is still put on hold because this function still needs to execute this line so when it executes this line we now have inside true and then after this function has been executed react can now trigger the next render and in the next render show heading is now going to be false and from that next render you can now see we have outside false i hope this makes sense this is what i mean by asynchronous asynchronousity means here that when you trigger a state update it's going to be queued for the next render and this is something that react does to improve performance of your application when you are updating multiple states at the same time and i'm 
going to show you what that means in a second. Now let's apply the same concept for this update show pricing cards. I'm going to remove this comment from here. So when you do set show pricing cards, this is going to batch or queue the update. So if we try to do console.log show pricing cards, uh, let me just take this part away. Opening my console again, if I click on update show pricing cards, the show pricing card state becomes false. But when I do console log show pricing cards, here I have true. Again, that's because this was queued for the next render and the next render hasn't happened yet because this function has not finished executing. So we still have this here and this has access to the current render and in the current render show pricing cards is still true. It is in the next render that show pricing cards becomes false. Now I mentioned that this idea of asynchronousity and batched state update is to improve performance when you're updating multiple states at the same time. Let me now show you what that means. So here I have two buttons, right? But let's just say I have only one button which does the multiple state update. If you remember from the previous lesson, we also had this where we had just one button that handled two state updates. And here I'm just going to say update states. When you click on this button, I'm going to call a function called update states. So I'm going to have a function called update states. And then here I'm just going to copy this, copy this. So you can see now that this function is handling two state updates. It is updating the show pricing card state and it is updating the show heading state. As I've understood so far, when you update state, it triggers a re-render, right? Now imagine what will happen when you click this button update states. That event is handled by this function and then this line is executed which updates the state. Now let's assume this causes a re-render immediately, synchronously. And then this line also updates another state which will then cause a re-render. Now what you would see here is that by clicking one button, just one event causes two re-renders. And let's say you had more state updates here, like maybe you had set checked, set number. Let's just say you had four. Now this is going to mean that just by clicking one button, your component is going to be re-rendered four times. This first line triggers a re-render, this second line triggers a re-render, this third line triggers a re-render, and this fourth line triggers a re-render. And the more complex your application becomes, doing something like this can greatly affect the performance of your application. So how does React avoid this? Again, asynchronousity and batched state. By updating this state, React is going to queue this for next render. It comes to the next line because it hasn't finished with this function yet. Remember, it has to finish with the function before the next render. So it comes to the next line here. This updates the show heading state. It is going to again queue for the next render. It comes to the next line. It is going to again queue for the next render. And then it comes to the next line and it's going to again queue for the next render. This way, instead of your re-rendering to happen four times, it is only going to happen once. And in the next render, the show pricing card state would have the updated value. The show heading state would have the updated value. The checked state would have the updated value and the number would have the updated value. So just one re-render with the updated states. React is going to batch all of these updates for the next render. So before the next render occurs, React is now going to update this state, update this state, update this state, update this state, and then you're only going to have one re-render. But like we saw earlier, if you have different function handlers for the different states, then each of those handlers are going to trigger a re-render. This one would trigger a re-render, this one would trigger a re-render. But then if you have just one handler which updates multiple states, then React is going to batch those updates or queue those updates for the next re-render. Just to show you that this multiple state update is going to trigger only one re-render instead of multiple renders, let me take this line off and I'm going to put this console log I am rendered again. Now if we open the console, we have the first I am rendered, which is the first rendering of this component. Now if I click on update states, this is going to trigger these two state updates, right? But if I click on this, you see I only get one more I am rendered, which means this was only re-rendered once instead of twice. We have two state updates here, but these two state updates did not trigger re-renders. They were queued for the next render. And in the next render, show pricing cards becomes false and show heading becomes false. I hope this lesson was helpful and I hope you understand this concept better now. Let me know in the comments below if this makes much sense to you now. We're moving on to our next lesson. We're going to be looking at how to manage state in controlled components.